Hello, my name is Kathy, and I am the art teacher at Art Project for Kids. I do hope it becomes your favorite place for finding easy step-by-step -step art lessons. Hey, if you're a fan of the classic Tim Burton movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, I've got some good news for you. I just made a tutorial for one of the main characters, Sally. It's an easy way to draw her with that famous Tim Burton kind of look. Here's how you do it. To get results like mine, the supplies you're going to need are a soft number two pencil, black marker, white colored pencil, and brown cardstock paper. My PDF tutorial might come in handy too. Not pictured here is a ruler for drawing center lines on your paper, but any straight edge would work fine too. I do like to work with a center vertical and horizontal line when I draw. This cardstock paper though is pretty thick, so I'm not gonna fold it, but rather draw light pencil lines instead. A center line in both directions will do the trick. Step number one, Sally's head is going to be about this big and take up almost half of the top of the paper. I like to make my marks at the top and bottom and sides to help plan the size of the head first. Now place your pencil at the top and draw one side down through the side mark and then meeting at the bottom one. Then go back to the top and draw the other side the same way to get a nice symmetrical oval. Sally's eyes are made with large circles that are about this big and sit right here on her face. They need to be almost the size of a golf ball or something. Work slowly so that you can make them as round as you can. I'm adding small circles that are going to be the black spots in her eyes. Mine are on the left, but you could certainly make your drawing with her eyes looking up or down too. Sally's eyes need to have some eyelashes added too. I'm drawing about eight or so on each side and they're spread out over the top of each eye. They just have a little bit of a curve to them. Step number three. Now you can finish the eyes with just a simple brow line over the top of each one. Her mouth can start with the center line and then a lip added on top and one below. Then a simple nose is added with just a curved line like this. Step number four. Now because Sally is a rag doll, she has some long seam lines on the side of her mouth. After those lines are drawn, you need to add some small X's and marks to look like little stitches. You do need to do this to both sides. Step number five. Now Sally gets a long neck and some narrow shoulders. They are about just as wide as her head. Her clothes are pretty simple, just a V-neck and some sleeve lines will do. Step number six. Now it's time to draw the inside line of Sally's hair like this. The line starts on her forehead and then goes down her face and touches her shoulders. Draw one side and then draw the other to match. The outside line of her hair is added to make it look thick and long. I'm starting with a part line in the middle of her head, then drawing one side making it go all the way around her head and down to the bottom of the paper. Then of course I'm going to be drawing the same thing on the other side. Step number seven. This is the important step of erasing this part of the headline now that Sally has hair. Because her hair is now in front, you wouldn't see that line anymore. One of the last few details are some seam lines on Sally's neck. I'm adding two going around and one going up and down. Afterwards, a few little lines and X's on the seams will look like stitches. A few on each line is all you need. They will help tell the story that Sally is indeed a rag doll. Okay, the drawing is done, so it's time to trace all the pencil lines with your black marker. Don't forget to erase those little stitch lines too. 
Now is a good time to use an eraser to get rid of any pencil lines that might still be showing. It will really help your drawing look a lot cleaner. Step number eight. This step is to help Sally's hair stand out a lot more by adding lots and lots of lines inside. Just start with your marker at the part and draw a line that goes all the way down. The goal is to make the lines pretty close and generally follow the shape that is already there. No worries if your lines are a little closer or further apart than mine. It will still look like her hair. It just adds a lot more texture to your drawing. Step number nine. Now the only part of the drawing that gets filled in black, the spots in Sally's eyes. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole project, coloring in the eyes with a white colored pencil. The side of the nose and the neck get a little white highlight too. To give Sally's hair a little bit of color, use the side of your soft pencil and start to shade it. The entire head of her hair does need to be filled in. You could go back and make some areas darker for shadows if you want. That's totally optional though. Her pencil gray hair will look great no matter what. Now her lips need a little bit of gray shading too. And finally, some patterns on her shirt. I'm going to start with a few swirls and then finish with some stripes. You just need a kind of random look. Okay, this Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas drawing is done. And this cool look was done completely with these three simple tools. Nothing messy or expensive. Pretty cool, right? You can find more projects like this on my website, Art Projects for Kids, including how to draw a nightmare self-portrait and how to draw a haunted house. Thanks for coming, and I hope you come back to draw with me again real soon.